Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to Lancelot's Nerd Corner. I'm Lancelot and welcome to another episode of Off the Cuff, a series where I talk impromptu, discuss figures in my collection that deserve more love um, in the form of a video, but not necessarily a whole review. And today, the figure that we'll be discussing off the cuff is Samurai Batman by Star Ace. Although you'll probably find it listed as Batman Ninja 2.0, I think is the official name. Every company's got a 2.0s out the wazoo now, apparently. That being said, this is a figure that came out a few years ago, so it may or may not be available in places you shop at. Although I think Sideshow has been trying to get rid of it for a while now. <laughs> I actually got this at Sideshow. Shout out. Not sponsored though. <laughs> so yeah, first off, I guess we should start out with where it came from, what it's inspired from, and it's from the movie Batman Ninja. It was an anime, by, on, I think it was on Netflix. Um, it's part of the DC AMU, wait. Yes, the DC animated movie universe. It is part of that. So it was, you know, an official uh, Warner Bros. DC animated movie. It was actually an anime though. So it might not have been to the liking of some Western audiences or whatever, but I loved it. Without getting into spoiler territory, ba Batman basically gets transported back in time along with a few other Batman characters to the Sengoku Jidai period of, of, of Japan. So feudal Japan, warring states period and it might seem a bit like fantastical, which it kind of was, but at the end of the day, it was still a great Batman story. I actually genuinely think it's one of the best Batman animated movies ever. It was a little bit kind of just bog standard Batman story, like, but it had all the elements that it needed to be a good Batman story. The Bat Family, Joker, insurmountable odds, and just Batman never giving up. And it's genuinely one of my favorite Batman movies. And so I had to pick up the figure. I, I, it was actually kind of crazy that Star Ace even made a figure from this series. But as you can tell, I'm gonna wait for it to spin before I... As you can tell, it is a stunner. Like it just captures your eye and your attention. It is a lot more stylized than what you would uh, probably expect from a Batman figure but honestly it's one of the reasons why i freaking love it i don't know if i would put it in like my top five batmans in my collection but it may very well it very well could be it absolutely could be obviously you have the head sculpt which is uh it has that traditional samurai kind of helmet but with the bat ears and it also has that, these like tufts of white hair that you might actually see in, in like some samurai figures. Like I know that I think Pop Toys is it? They do a lot of samurai figures. And I think the tufts of hair make it so visually striking. And it, it's one of the things that differentiates it so much from other Batman figures. There is one issue though. And depending on, I mean, depending on what you want out of this figure, it may be a big issue or small issue, but basically there's only one head sculpt and the expression on it isn't really the best for any other pose than an action pose. In order for the head sculpt to kind of work, or at least the expression on the head sculpt, you have to kind of have it in a dynamic action pose. You can't just have him in a museum pose or standing still or else the screaming, the wide open mouth screaming expression just looks odd. <laughs> um, for me personally, it's not a big issue because I do like posing it uh, dynamically, but what does bother me though is that this issue is compounded by another one, which is that the, the undersuit of the figure, it's made out of like this really thick rubber, so it's really difficult to actually get the joints to move. You might not be able to see the undersuit underneath all the armor plates, uh, which are all magnetic by the way, the shoulder uh, armor, the waist armor, those are actually all magnetic, and I think that's really cool. But underneath that all is the undersuit, which is it's just so difficult to pose. You, it genuinely fights you when you try to raise the arm up or especially the legs. The legs are barely movable at all. 10 to 20 degrees in any direction at best. I have it in sort of a split stance, but this is like the best that I could manage genuinely. And I tried fighting it for a while. So if you're Star Ace and you're expecting with this sculpted screaming expression, you're expecting uh, collectors to pose it in a dynamic pose, but then you go and make this really thick rubbery undersuit that cannot be posed. It, individually, I guess they're not big issues, but together they, they're kind of a big issue. But I suppose 
the functionality of the figure with something as stylized and visually striking as this, I guess the functionality isn't the most important thing. It genuinely is just like the aesthetics of it. How good does it look? And it just looks so damn good. So I guess I could give Star Ace a pass for that. The cape is also, as you can probably tell, wired. And I'm inclined to say it's very wired. And by that, I'm, I just mean there are, there are tons of wires in the thing. Usually, like with Hot Toys or, or other companies that or, or third parties that do Batman, if they do a wired cape, usually it's like three to five wires, maybe six. This cape has like, I want to say like seven to eight wires. It's a lot. And at first I thought it was overkill, but they're actually pretty strong. And because there's so much of them, you can really get the cape posed however you want, like in almost any pose you want. I've had poses where both sides are kind of, both sides of the cape are like lifted up. I've had poses where they're in front of him, like flowing in front of him. I've had it draped over the shoulders. It's a genuinely dynamic cape and it's all thanks to the amount of wires in there and how strong they are. And obviously, as you've probably noticed, one of the most striking and eye-catching things about the figure is that bright red fabric that flows on front of the, of the groin and the legs. It's bright red and has that bright yellow bat symbol, uh, the Bat Ninja style bat symbol. And then it has like the golden tufts of, of string at the bottom and then a thick like rope tied around his waist. It's one of the coolest six scale things I've ever seen on a figure. It's so visually appealing and striking. I really cannot describe in words how good it looks, especially in person. There are no wires on it, so you can't really pose it, but you don't really need to. It's just, it's just there in all of its glory. It does also come with a ton of accessories, two samurai swords, a bunch of batarangs, a, a few kunais actually, a display base which you will definitely need to use because again the legs can barely move and the ankles although they are split cut they're like barely split cut so you probably won't get a lot of movement out of them anyway. I think for me the colors are definitely what stand out the most about it um, apart, apart from the design and the overall style of the, the way that the figure looks. Obviously it's mostly black but then you have tons of of gold accents, a few white accents, and then that bright red and yellow fabric in front. It, it catches your eye so easily and so effortlessly. So shout out Star Ace. Um, I know they got a lot of hate for, I think, the boys figures, but they are capable of making really awesome figures. Overall, it may not be a Batman figure that is for every, you know, DC collector, probably not even for every Batman collector, but for me, it's definitely an amazing amazing pickup this was actually one of the first figures i ever got and my goodness that it, it definitely contributed to me just diving down the rabbit hole so to speak into this hobby every time i look at this figure in my collection i am just reminded of the greatness and the amazing artistry that so many companies in this industry are capable of. So yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram at Lancelot's Nerd Corner. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.